in the in the top twenty, there's a the marking system was forty uh, percent for leather image, forty mm-hmm. percent for presentation, and twenty percent for physical appearance. So, yep. um, for the people who are worried about bodies, that you know that they it would appear that they've diminished that a little bit. But yeah, you know, it's, it's not the it's not the main focus of it. Now, one of the commentary that I noticed, so I was following along the Twitter feed mm-hmm. uh, during the, the process, and there were people on stage who weren't really, there were some people who could argue that they weren't wearing leather, or they weren't wearing enough leather. In regards to the leather image section? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, leather image doesn't, is not limited to just cow. Mm-hmm. Um, a leather man images image is not just limited to um, hide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> the the classic image of a leather man going back to the seventies and eighties mm. usually involves a black t shirt, <clears throat> a bar vest, and a pair of blue jeans. Mm. Um, so that's there's not that much hide in that. Um, I don't. I think if someone can <clears throat> carry off an image that represents the leather community, it doesn't mm. matter if, if they're not wearing that much leather or not. So if we look at your shirt, mm-hmm. that that is an example of the almost prototype leather man of the past, say, that yeah. that it's a it's a masculine image, um, with or without facial hair, but generally it, it's um, now, if we were to contrast that with, say, somebody wearing a leather corset, mm-hmm. um, that how does that sit in the context of the IML competition? Leather being, I think there's scope in the IML competition <clears throat> to encourage not just masculine expressions of mm-hmm. leather, um, which was pioneered last year with um, Tugger. Mm. Um, with the high heels and the, the yeah. corset, and mm. and there was a couple this year that were going um, that were expressing themselves. Mm. Um, there so were, was there, that did that come across more as an expression of self rather than an expression of a, an ideology? Yeah, in in, in in both cases it was. It was mm. like they they happen to love leather, mm-hmm. um, but they're not. That they don't. They have a more feminine side to their their mm-hmm. personalities, yeah. and they're on stage being themselves. And I'd much rather see that than someone <clears throat> who would much rather be in a corset, mm-hmm. standing out there in a pair of chaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Because yeah, the I think that was one of the things that I noticed. It was that because I don't know these people, and mm-hmm. it's really hard to to, to do it from yeah. a Twitter feed, isn't it? That, yeah, true. But but if if wearing the corset is is them. If, if I went and visited their home on, mm. and they're strutting around, you know, vacuuming yeah. in their corset. And Jeremy then, said, I'd love to have a zero inch waist so I yeah, could yeah. Just, just exist in a corset. And it's like, well, you, you, you go, you own that and, and it's it's yours. And that's, wow. that's how you, if, if that's <clears throat> how you fetishize leather, then, then you should you should have every right to be able to express that in that absolutely. way. Absolutely. So it's not like Violet Chachki has the exclusive rights to corsets in yes. in America. So, um, okay. So I, I was going through the contestants mm-hmm. and it's a fairly white male event when you look at it. Yeah. From a, from a very superficial point of view. Mm-hmm. And I had a really interesting interview with, one of the onyx brothers and fascinating and so wonderful to to hear of the strength that's coming from that group and there were a few guys of asian descent as well Mm -hmm. do you think that there's room for more diversity within the leather community well one of the things is that's wonderful about the leather community is that it embraces it embraces diversity Mm -hmm. Um, the number of non-white mm. Caucasian um, competitors mm. uh, was was pretty. I think it was as well re- represented there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 
probably a fair representation of the the, the existing leather community in, okay. in the uh, USA. Mm-hmm. Um, the there's always greater scope for um, making the community more diverse, mm. but I, I think the numbers that were there was probably because of how the actual leather community is represented. Okay, so you see it as a fair reflection of this is yeah. this is how it is yeah. currently. Um, cool. So, how would you compare the US leather scene to the Australian leather scene? <clears throat> It's much grander on scale. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the, the first glaringly obvious thing. Mm. Um, I think there's geographical variations in the US leather scene okay. from east to west coast, from northeast to southeast coast. In what way? <clears throat> there, there's, and I haven't been to all these communities, so this mm-hmm. is. I'm judging this on the basis of how they were re- represented to me mm-hmm. um, through the contestants at IML. Yep. Um, I've spent time in New York, I've spent time in San Francisco, mm-hmm. a little bit of time in Miami. So I haven't actually seen a lot of the non um, mm. sort of main touristy cities in the mm. US. And um, the Melbourne's got a really strong leather scene that um, is up there with everything that I've seen anywhere else Mm. uh, in terms of diversity, in terms of um, size, Mm. the, and uh, in terms of community involvement with those that are in, in the leather community here, Mm. um, the, I think that you can describe that divide the leather community in the states into the the party community and those that take it a lot more seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think that that division's comparable to here as well. Because mm. um, say for example, if if you go to a, a one of the local leather parties, that you're going to have people that you know that you you arrive and you know okay well these are established people within the community and i know them Mm. well and then you will see some people who might still have the swing tag hanging from their yeah their mandatory piece of leather um and it's it could be it has been a similar comparison has been made within the the pup community Mm. as well but i wonder these are the people that we need to foster because with well, that... The, I was one of those people at mm. one point where I, I went to a party with a borrowed harness. Mm. And, mm. But I found a community, community that I resonated with. Mm. Um, and, you know, not everyone has a full kit of gear when they first go out. It's expensive. It, it is very expensive. And um, it's probably why you see the... The, the rise in popularity of the rubber community um, Cause it's, with it's, the younger with the uh, younger guys is because that it is more uh, economically accessible mm, mm. and <clears throat> but at the, at the same time I don't think it's fair to be dismissive in any way shape or form of those people mm. because they are you know in the future the f- yeah mm. would you um, so w- within the leather community there's there's a lot of crossover Mm. and one of the big crossovers is and it's a community that you've had connection with as well as the pup community Mm -hmm. um what was iml like from a handler perspective there are a lot of pups there yeah (laughs) um and the popularity of um pup play is is growing and growing and growing Mm. it's becoming a very uh, integral part to the leather community as well. Mm. Um, I was actually waiting for my uh, interview at the time, but they uh, they had a, a a discussion on pup play. Um, okay. And that they had allowed a certain sized venue for uh, within the hotel, and they had that to capacity and mm. twi- twice twice over, mm. um, which gives an idea of how interested people people are in it um it's really great to see the diversity of the hoods that are being developed Mm. um Mm. and 
and how how more how much more intricate they they're getting, mm. which means that people can express their own identities um, mm. rather than having a generic off the shelf mm. um, <clears throat> hood in black, yeah. <clears throat> which was you know where where things were at not too long ago. Yeah. Um, so that's something the and I think the pup community assimilates well with the broader leather community hmm. and um, is integral and particularly from a from a handler's point of view it, it does does sort of um, sit quite nicely and I think currently there's and I think this is almost universal I, I don't know but there's a it's the Tupperware drawer issue that there's there's lots of pups but not quite as many handlers mm -hmm. um, and I wonder is this um, again are we fostering new generations of, of handlers and, and leathermen and mm -hmm. you know from from a futuristic perspective if we project ourselves in forward what do you think is some good things that we can do to encourage mentorship within all of the kink communities <clears throat> um making sure that events are inclusive is the key one um because if you encourage events that uh, say are just pups and mm. there's no crossover with the leather community you might find um there are some very willing leather men that would be handlers for pups that don't maybe maybe don't um identify as pups themselves mm. but enjoy being in that environment so if you can um cross over and cross pollinate events with different sectors of the community you're going to find people that resonate with one or two different elements and, and that'll be important in um creating sort of the environment where mentorship can happen because hmm. i think initially some of the interface between the say the pup community and the leather community was a little bit awkward and there were some rough patches, but it would appear that that's um, that everyone's meeting in a in a, a safe ground now. Yeah, I, I think mostly that's because there's no definition of what pup play is. Hmm. There's no definition of what constitutes a good pup or a bad pup or hmm. an indifferent pup. Hmm. Um, people can get involved into that into that scene to the depth that they're comfortable with, hmm. and I think that's that's the that's a key thing to remember with all kink play is that people are going to work within their own comfort levels mm. and so for some it might mean getting in the full kit um, hand pads knee pads and getting out and completely pupping out mm. for others it might be um, a way they interact with their greetings with their, their mates mm. Um, mm. For, for others it might be um, more sexual role for some it won't be a sexual role at all mm. and so that's something that I think because there's no, there's no hand, hand handbooks or hand guides for mm. for these kings um, um. that have been long established and you know mm. so and everyone has the right to um, express their their kink mm. how they see fit and I think we forget that it's not a zero sum game everyone's able to come to the table and bring their own it's like a potluck really isn't it yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your own thing. Um, one thing you know I enjoy um, when I greet pups is mm. to greet them in a pup manner mm. um, that doesn't make me a pup mm -hmm. it's not because that's not what I identify with but I think if you you know that our own bio pups yeah we don't greet them in a human way every time either so no um, so yeah th there's that that sort of element which is um I think that that's that's what's great in bringing diversity into any community is mm. that you know we write our own rules. Yeah. So look, we've yabbered on for some time, for yeah. quite some time, and I, I I really appreciate your energy and being able to keep up with this. But perhaps in closing, where do you see the leather community in the next five to ten years? I wish I had a crystal ball. I know. Uh, right? <laughs> um, I would like to hope that the leather community and um is going to it's going to be different to what i expect mm -hmm. it's, um that's the one thing i, I i'm sure about mm. i would like to hope that it's um it's grown mm -hmm. um that uh, i was gonna say i hope that some of the 
the misconceptions and um, people's prejudices about it would be broken down. But in some of the, in, in the other respect, that's part of the allure of the community. Mm-hmm. If if it was openly on the table for everyone, mm. I think um, it wouldn't have the magic that I find with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to think that it's for those that are interested in it. Mm that they have a safe place to come and explore explore it at their own pace. So, with that in mind, if there was a young person who's sitting at home watching this video and they don't know where to start and they're no connections to the community at all, what would you recommend for them? Um, reach out to... Um, if, if you're in Australia, reach out to one of your local... Um, clubs mm-hmm. we've got got them in um, Brisbane we've got them in Sydney we've got them in Melbourne mm-hmm. um, reach out to a title holder of those clubs or bars mm-hmm. um, ask them where would be the best place to go mm-hmm. ask them what they would want to do yep and um, and come along to something and remember if you come along to something just take it at your own pace mm-hmm. so you don't have to have you don't formal letters. You don't have to have f- to no the lead. No, God no. Um, you know, you borrow something off a friend, see if you like it. Yeah, yeah. And come along and have a look and mm. um, give it a shot. Cool. If somebody wanted to contact you, mm-hmm. how what would be the best way for them to contact you? Go through Facebook and search Lead Leatherman. Um, okay. Would be a very easy way of doing it. Okay, sounds good. Um, are there any closing points that you would like to? share with the group or um all i can say is if get in get involved if you want to do it just get get out there and uh throw your hat into the ring and you know because you'll have a good time cool well thank you very much steve your daddy steve i apologize this <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> your time is really appreciated and i look forward to hearing the response mm. from the community from your great open and sharing in this in this chat thank you george